431 in your hymnal, 431. I found a friend who is all to me. I'm saved, saved, saved. Let's all stand together, if you would, as we sing 431 on that verse together. I found a friend who is all. saved, isn't it? And uh, I'm glad I'm saved, and uh, good to see you back in church on Sunday evening. Look forward to a good service tonight, and a good morning this morning, wasn't it? And, uh, praise the Lord for that, and uh, let's pray and ask God to meet with us tonight as well. Let's bow together. Father, we do bow before you now tonight at the beginning of this service, and Lord, we want to first of all thank you for the good service we had together this morning. Thank you for meeting with us and for speaking to our hearts and for decisions that were made in the lives of your people. And Father, we are, want to thank you also that we're saved. Yes. Thank you for a great salvation you provided through Jesus Christ. As the choir sang earlier, we're on the victory side, and we're thankful for that. And Lord, we pray that you'll have your way in each of our hearts and lives tonight, that each of us will be yielded to the Spirit, and Lord, you'll be able to say what you would want to say to each of our hearts tonight. So have free reign, Lord, and the best we know how, we yield ourselves to you that your will would be accomplished in each one of our hearts and lives this evening. Control the service for your glory. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Would you take your hymnal and turn to 355 with me? 355, wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. 355, let's sing that verse together. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than
provide some announcements now. Uh, schedule this week, ladies, don't forget, tomorrow night, your ladies' night out, uh, 6.30 over in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, if you haven't signed up, make sure you do so downstairs and uh, have a good time with that tomorrow evening. Wednesday night will be the midweek service here at 7 p.m. I've uh, been doing a series of studies on Wednesday night about how God has uh, provided His Word to our generation, and we talked about the uh, last week the the place of, that He uses to provide His Word to every generation. This Wednesday, we'll talk about the people that God uses to provide His Word to every generation, and uh, that's where uh, we're going to get involved, all right? So uh, don't miss Wednesday night. You're going to enjoy uh, that study this Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, and then uh, remember the RU Inside on Thursday night down at the prison. Pray for that. Had a great there, meeting there Thursday night. 45 men there, um, 13 brand new ones, and uh, 32 returnees. And we had uh, 12 men receive Christ as their Savior on Thursday night. It was a wonderful time, great time, and uh, just just exciting to see what the Lord's doing there. Uh, in the prison. Had a great night here Friday night at Reform and Uh Had 32 adults here with eight first-time visitors, first-time first-timers of the program on uh, Friday night and uh, just a great time. I think all together with the children and the nursery and everyone, there were uh, 46 or 48 all together here, almost 50. It was a great, great night and uh, we praise the Lord for that. And then, of course, Saturday morning will be the uh, bus visitation, our soul winning time at 10 o'clock, and uh, be out for that. The next Sunday will be Father's Day, and we'll honor all the fathers in attendance and have a special gift for you uh, that you'll enjoy uh, next Sunday, and so we hope you plan to be with us uh, all the way through. All right? Now, let's take just a moment, and we'll welcome anybody visiting with us tonight. Anybody here tonight for the first time? Any first timers? You've been, you've been here before in the back row, sir. Have you been here before? Tell me who you are. All right, Glenn, good to have you. I think I do remember that. We don't get too many from Hazard, Kentucky. And uh, good to see you again, my friend. Thanks for coming back. All right, let's take a minute then. We'll hear from the choir tonight.
would you turn with me to number 11? He is mine. He is mine. Long before the fall of man, God designed a master plan. Aren't you glad he is mine? On that first together. Long before the fall of man, God designed a master plan. He exchanged the sinner for the sinless one. Jesus left his throne on high, came to earth to bleed and die. He said, Father, not my will. to number 13 the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows let's all stand together as we sing since I started for the kingdom all together since I started and for the kingdom since my life he controls since I gave my heart to Jesus Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Every need he is supplying, plenteous grace he bestows. Let's sing that last together. Every need he is supplying. Plenteous grace he bestows Every day my way gets brighter The longer I serve him The sweeter he grows The longer I serve him The more that I Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Let's sing that chorus one more time without the instruments. Think about that, though, while we're singing it. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. I hope that's true in your life as well. Let's sing that chorus one more time. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. His day is like heaven, my heart overflows. Be seated, if you will. You believe what you sang? All right. Miss Slaybaugh needs some men to help put up tables after church tonight. You just sang, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. <laughs> oh, that's just the song we sing. No, just get to practice what you sing now. Uh, just some fellows set up some tables for the ladies tomorrow night. Uh, who would help with that? See a good man? Some quick hands, all right, fellas. Just head over there, and she'll be there to give you instructions and uh, get you all ready to go for that. Thank you for helping. We appreciate that. All right, let's pray and ask God's blessing uh, on the offering this evening, and uh, let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for the privilege it's ours to give. Thank you, Lord, for the faithful giving of the people of Bible Baptist Church, and Lord, through them, you have enabled us to do many, many things, and be able to reach many people with the gospel message and i pray you continue to bless your people that they in turn would continue to give to thee lord it is true the longer we serve you the sweeter you grow and i pray that we would find the more we love you the more love you bestow and lord i pray that we would find that true in the area of giving as well so bless the offering this evening lord you know our needs i pray that the giving of your people would meet the needs of your church. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen.
take your Bible this evening for our scripture reading to James chapter 1, please. James chapter 1. We are going to begin at verse number 19 and read through verse number 27. James 1, beginning on 19 and reading through 27. Reading them responsibly as we normally do. And as we also normally do, let's stand together to read the scripture, James 1. And let's begin together on verse number 19. Ready? Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain." Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here this evening. And Father, I pray that you would have our hearts prepared for the preaching of the word of God. Pray, Lord, that our hearts would be good soil tonight that the Word of God would fall into and bring forth fruit. Lord, we thank you already for the wonderful music and the fellowship, the good spirit that's in this place. Lord, we pray that each of us now would be open to what you would want to say to your church tonight. Give us all ears to hear, that we might hear what the Spirit would say. Bless the special now, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Make me a servant like you, dear Lord, living for others each day. Take every part, give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Help me draw so close to you that your love comes shining through. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Make me a witness like you, dear Lord, showing the love of the cross, sharing your word till all have heard, serving whatever the cost. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart, Use my life, take every part. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Help me draw so close to you that your love comes shining through. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart.
Now, our Father, we bow before you in prayer and we ask for your help as we come to the preaching of the Word of God. Lord, we want to hear from you this evening. I pray that you would again open understanding as we look into your Word tonight. I ask for your help as I bring the message and I ask for help for the people as they listen tonight. That you would help us to understand how we can benefit from this book that you've given to us called the Bible. And so, Lord, uh, guide us, help me to say what ought to be said and leave unsaid what doesn't need to be said. But, Lord, help the message to be clear and help it to be understandable. And, Lord, help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, at least once a day, probably several times a day, you have occasion to get before a mirror and review the way you look. If you don't, I would highly recommend it. And maybe that's something you ought to add to your life. But, but usually you straighten out clothes or you fix uh, hair out of place or you, you, you find out what the flaw is and you do something about it. It, it, the mirror helps us because it reveals to us how we really look. And I want to, tonight, the Bible says that it's our mirror that we look into and it tells us how we really look. It doesn't pull any punches just like the mirror doesn't. And it allows us through the Holy Spirit to see us as we really are then we have to do something about it, okay? And not just ignore it and think that everything will be okay. So you understand that what, what we are is not based on what other people's opinion is or other people's observation is. It is based on what God's Word says it is. So we have to always come back to the Word of God. The problem is that many people today do not read the Bible, nor some that say they read it do they claim to understand it. And we know that it's not because they don't have a Bible. We understand there's three billion people in the world that do not have a Bible, but those are not people who are in America. Most, of, most people in America, if they don't have a Bible, they have access to one if they want one. They can get to one if they need one. In fact, I was reading a Gallup poll recently that said 82% of Americans believe that the Bible is either literal or the inspired Word of God. That's, that's, that was an amazing statistic, by the way. But yet, of those 82% who said, I believe it's the inspired Word of God, only half of them said they read their Bible at least monthly. Half of that, 82%, couldn't name one of the four Gospels, and fewer than half could name who gave the Sermon on the Mount. So, in other words, they have the Bible, and they claim to have read the Bible, but obviously they haven't benefited from the Bible. Well, how can I benefit from the Bible? How can I... Uh, receive from it what I think God intended it to be read. I would tell you tonight, church, the Bible's not irrelevant. The Bible is unread, and the Bible is unapplied, but it is certainly not irrelevant. It's a very practical book. And James here is going to tell us, and by the way, James, I believe God had James pen these words because James is the guy who, where the rubber meets the road. James is the guy who says, don't tell me you have faith if I can't see it. Uh, let me see your faith in action. And so he hasn't pinned the words, and he gives us here uh, some steps we can take so we can benefit from the Bible, so we can receive from the Word of God what I think the Lord would want us to have. And the very first step is this, that we must be receptive to God's Word. We have to be receptive to God's Word. Look at verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. 
Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. So the first thing we see is we're to receive with meekness the word of God. And that word receive is literally a word that means welcome. We're to welcome the Word of God, much like you would welcome a guest into your home. You would eagerly receive them into your home and want to welcome them there. And not, not, a, uh, not a begrudging way at all, or not a have-to way at all. But someone who you invited there, and you're looking forward to them coming. That's the welcome that we're to give the Word of God in our life. And it's characterized, by the way, uh, by humility uh, and openness. A willingness to receive what God wants us to have. How, how welcoming are you to the Word of God? How welcoming are you to wanting to have God's words? Now, with that receptivity to God's Word, wanting to receive it, notice what he says we have to have. Notice he says, first of all, we have to have a capacity or ability to listen. Let every man be swift to hear, verse 19. Quick to hear, swift to hear. That means I have an alert ear to the Word of God. I have an eagerness that I want to know what God has to say. And it's not just physically listening, maybe to a sermon or listening to someone read the Word of God, but it's that spiritual hearing that we're ready to listen to what the Spirit of God tells us as we read His Word. And willing to listen to what God has to say. And, and we have to be swift to hear. Oftentimes, we're just the opposite. The Bible says here, be swift to hear and slow to speak. Most of the time, most of us are swift to speak and slow to hear. We just get it turned around. And, and we're so eager to uh, talk to God, we're not very eager to listen to what God has to say to us. And so God is saying, let's make sure that you put first things first and, and be willing to hear what God says. And in here, and, and, and to do that, you have to go to the second thing. And that is slow to speak or have a controlled tongue. A capacity to listen, but you have to have a controlled tongue. One of the things that keeps you from hearing is you're talking. You can never hear when you're talking. All right? And by the way, you can't hear when you're not listening, but you're just thinking about what you're going to say next. You ever been in those conversations? And uh, no one's listening to what you're saying. They're just figuring out what, as soon as you get a pause or you take a breath, they're jumping in, ready to go. And that's not the way we approach the Word of God or we approach God speaking to us. Someone said God, when He was giving out the body parts, He gave you two ears and one mouth and He knew what He was doing. Okay? And so we understand that there's a message there. I should be twice listening twice as much as I'm willing to speak. All right? And so we have to be willing to control the tongue. Sometimes we don't listen too well. I remember and when I was thinking about this was one of the presidents, I, I thought it was one of the Roosevelt's or somebody, wasn't it, uh, where folks are filing by. He was concerned about people don't really listen to what they say. And it was a, uh, they were receiving folks at a dinner and he and his wife are standing there, a White House dinner. And, and as folks came by, he would shake their hand and say, I, didn't he say, I killed my mother-in-law tonight or I murdered my mother-in-law tonight? And people would say, wonderful, good to see you, thank you, God bless you. Nobody, finally one person said, well, I'm sure she deserved it, sir. And uh, at, least, at least somebody was listening to what he was saying. But he just used it as an example to people don't listen to what you say. And, and that's often true sometimes. And, and by the way, I, for, for a few years I, I taught a Christian school, and every Monday morning I would ask the eighth grade students, okay, what did your pastor preach on yesterday? Oh, boy, was that demoralizing huh I mean to have 8th graders I'm not talking about 3rd or 4th grade I'm talking about 8th graders these are 14 year olds and they look at you like uh, the Bible uh, Jesus you know you know, they, they had no idea and I thought boy I'm glad their pastor didn't hear this you know you put hours and hours into preparing and studying and then uh, and by the way that, uh, that can happen to all of us I'm not saying that, that you, uh, you know, somebody could ask you tomorrow what the pastor preached on yesterday, and you might look like, oh boy, well now what do I say? Uh, but I hope you would be able to, to, to retain some things. Uh, and, and, but you do that by listening, being quick to hear. Quick to hear. Am I eager to hear what God wants to tell me? 
Am I eager to hear what God wants to tell me? Or do I just want to rush through and get, get my ten pages in or get my four chapters in so I can say, well, I'm on my schedule. I got her done. But we didn't hear anything God said. Okay? Be swift to hear. Be slow to speak. Have a controlled tongue. And then uh, there's something else he says. Be slow to wrath. You have to have a calm, a calm spirit. That's interesting. That's not, and by the way, that's not easy to do. We're in a fast-paced world. And you know, it, listen, you, one thing you find out as you get to be a Christian, God's never in a hurry. And so if you're going to meet with God, you've got to slow down. And you have to be quiet. Mary, God called Mary sitting at His feet. He said, that's the needful part. There's a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. That's a place where you slow down. David in the psalm says, be still and know that I am God. Maybe that's why people don't like being still so much. They always like to keep busy and moving and going and noise and something going on all the time. If you just be still, you'll know that I'm God. Just having a calm spirit. You know, slow to anger. How many of you experience that it's not, not easy to communicate with somebody who's angry? Have you been noticed that? When someone's angry and mad, they're not listening. They're not going to hear you. You're not gonna, you're not, your logic isn't going to get through. You always have to uh, allow folks to, to calm down so that when, when you're upset, you just seem to block out what someone else is saying. And listen, if you don't calm down before you come to God's Word, you'll not hear what God's saying. Okay? You'll not hear what He's about to tell you. And so, listen. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. So God wants to, to, to bring those things to us, but as long as we have resentments and, and bitterness and anger and maybe even hatred, you know what it is? That's barriers to God communicating with us. I... I, I I feel like it's, you know, we talk about that spiritual darkness that as, as we walk in the light, but you know, there, there's sin will, will begin to block that light from getting through. It's, uh, I, as I was thinking about that, I thought, you know, it's, it's kind of like if, you're, if your dryer, ladies, isn't drying right. I'll say, man, I ran that load and it's not dry. What might be the problem? You pull that little thing out, that, that, that screen thing, don't you? And what's all over that screen? Yeah, lint. And if that gets full, you know what? It hinders the airflow going through and your clothes don't dry. Now, to, to just so you know, that's the extent of my repair work on the dryer, all right? But uh, that, that is, uh, so if you have other problems with your dryer, don't come talk to me, all right? But that's, uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? And listen, we can hinder God communicating with us by allowing those things in our life. And then we don't have the spiritual direction that we want to get from God. And that's why when that happens, what happens is you're always coming to somebody else saying, what should I do? What should I do? Because you don't have any confidence that God is telling you the right thing. Because you know there's things in your life that's blocking God's communication. So you're fearful to step out and do what you think He might want you to do because you're not sure that's what He's saying because you've got some resentment, bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, hate. You've got things blocking. And so you're trying to get to somebody who has light to tell you what to do. No, the answer is open your communication with God and let God speak to you. Okay? Let God direct you. And so God won't speak to you when you have those attitudes in your heart. Calm down so you can hear. And then there's one more thing. He says in order to receive, you need a clean life. Okay, this goes along with what we've been talking about. But notice what he said. That's what he means in verse 21. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word. That, that, that wickedness or that moral filthiness is what comes in and it, and, it, and it blocks the communication with God. Literally, it's interesting, the word for filth is the same word that we get our word earwax from. Anybody get wax in their ears? Too much wax? All of a sudden you say, man, speak up, would you? I can't hear you. You're not talking very loud. Oh, they're talking plenty loud. You know, the problem is you got to get the wax out of your ears. Okay? 
And you've got to clean that out so you can hear what God wants you to, to, to hear. Hey, is there anything in your life that you need to get rid of so you can hear God speak to you? Is there things that need you to get out of the way so you can clearly hear God communicating to you? Is it a tongue? Is it a speaking volume? Is it, is it not being willing to listen? Is it not eager to hear what God wants? Is there anger? Is there resentment? Is there filth? Is there moral impurity? That will all hinder God speaking to your heart. And so if you want to receive the word, you want to welcome the word, you have to be able to have a capacity to hear, a controlled tongue, a calm spirit, and a clean life. All right? You have to be receptive to God's Word. Number two, notice what else he says. If you want to benefit from God's Word, you have to be submissive to God's Word. You have to be submissive to God's Word. Verse 22, Be ye doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If any be a hearer of the Word, and not a doer, he's like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. He beholdeth himself, and goeth his way. Straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You have to be submissive to the Word of God. And, and listen, there's three ways that that happens that James gives us here in these verses. He says, first of all, it requires some examination. Verse 25, you look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein and not be a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. That man shall be blessed in his deed. You look into the perfect law of liberty. And that word looking there is very interesting. It's the same, it's the same word as when they stooped down and looked into the tomb on resurrection morning they looked in there they gazed intently they were looking to see something not just looking at it you ever looked at something but didn't see it you know what I mean you ever been you, you, you've been staring looking at something and, 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 and somebody says hey hey what are you looking at and you say nothing <laughs> you were looking but you weren't seeing and sometimes you can get that way with God's word and God says no that's not the look you need you need to be looking at the Word of God, to gazing into the Word of God, and making sure that you're seeing what, what God wants you to see. When you, you glance at the mirror, but all of a sudden something catches your attention, and what do you do? You move in for a closer look. That's just what Emma just went. I said, what do you do? She went, yeah. You see something there, and you say, man, what's that going? What's going on there? And you, you go in for a closer look. You zoom in. Okay, And sometimes when you're reading God's Word, hey, that's what you read it for. You want to submit to the Word of God. And when God shows you something, you zoom in for a closer look. Say, so what's that talking about? And what is God wanting to, to, to let me know there? And so I want to get a good long look and concentrate on what I'm looking at. And sometimes you're going to get a truth and you're going to want to dig into that truth and find out where, where it talks about that other places in the Bible and, and find out what God wants you to learn about that. Okay? Be, be a student of the Word of God and, and pour, over those, pour over what He's given you to do. Now, it says examination, but it also requires reflection. Reflection. We reflect on the Word of God. We talked a little bit about it this morning, <clears throat> but it's, it's a meditation on the Word of God. It's, it's thinking about what you've read. God, you know, I, I said before, the Holy Spirit of God is... is inside of every believer and the Bible said Jesus said when the spirits come he is going to bring to remembrance all things that I've spoken unto you so what the Holy Spirit does is he brings to our remembrance the things that we've learned from the word of God and verses that we've memorized from the word of God that we've memorized not in our head but in our heart and though the spirit of God is we've put that ammunition in there for him then when Satan comes to tempt like he did Jesus in the wilderness what did Jesus reply with every time he replied with the word of God by the way the first thing that came up was a scripture verse and, and listen when you're faced with situations and you're faced with pressures of life and those outside pressures the devil puts on us called temptations or pressures of life or cares of this world man when the word of God is in you what begins to come out first most is the word of God what, what Bible principle is going to handle this? 
What, what fruit of the Spirit? As I yield to the Spirit, how am I going to respond to this? Do I respond in the flesh? Do I do what I want? Do I say, oh, I need the bottle? Oh, I need to shoot up? Oh, I need to get a pill? Oh, I need to... How do we handle those things? Or is the first response, what does God say about this? Now, oftentimes the reason we turn to other things is because we haven't had any reflection. We haven't memorized any of the Word of God. We haven't meditated on the Word of God. And the Spirit of God has nothing to bring up. You've got to give Him the ammunition. Don't give the Holy Spirit of God a gun with no bullets. All blanks. You've got to give Him the ammunition. And, and buddy, I tell you what, if you put it in, He'll bring it out. He'll bring it out. He'll help you. But you have to put it in. You've got to put the effort there to put the word in. Reading, studying, memorizing, and meditating has to become a priority for the believer. So it, when I uh, receive the word of God and I submit to the word of God, then I have to have the examination. I have to have the reflection, but I also have to have a response. Notice what it says in verse 25 again. Whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a what? doer of the work this man should be blessed in his deed over in verse 22 be ye doers of the word and not hearers only I never never he said that man will be blessed notice you're not blessed by hearing the word you're blessed by doing the word God blesses the doing the obedience to his word God always we had a visit yesterday and we were trying to stress that young man God blesses obedience and God will punish disobedience. That's a, that's a truth all through the Scripture. And you have to understand that and, and, and get that right in your life. And by the way, mom and dad, you need to teach that to your children. Obedience is rewarded. Disobedience is punished. Why? You're giving them the proper view of God. If you let them get by with disobedience, they'll think that's how God is. God winks or God laughs when I do something that's wrong, but it's cute. See? No, God doesn't laugh. God will judge that. And so uh, we have to personally respond to His Word. God's Word applies to us. God's Word applies to me. When I read it, I'm supposed to do it. I'm supposed to obey it. It's not, it's not th this idea, this situation, well, now that's okay for you to do, but I don't think you know, that that's what I need to do. No, if God says that's what we're supposed to do, that's what we're supposed to do. Don't, don't, don't get uh, mixed up in the situation ethics of the world and think that it's okay for somebody else, but it's not for me. If, if you're not willing to do the Word and obey the Word, don't expect to be blessed by the Word. If you're not willing to obey the Word, don't expect to be blessed by the Word. Many Christians stop at hearing and receiving the Word, but they do not take the step of obeying the Word of God. They think they can receive the blessing of God without being obedient to the Word of God. Oh, they're abundant. People believe that. But James says, if we think that, we are self-deceived. We're deceiving ourselves. We're, 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 we're playing games. And we have to be willing to put into practice it's like someone who, you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror to assess the damages from the night before. And you look at it and there's crud in the eyeballs and there's hair going every direction. And you say, okay, we're good to go. And you just walk out. And listen, someone, someone who hopefully you have somebody who loves you enough to say, did you look in the mirror this morning? <laughs> and what would you think if somebody said, sure? Why? Well, aren't you going to do something about it? <laughs> well, I feel like some way, sometimes when, when I meet Christians like that. And you want to say, have you read the Bible? Oh, sure. Well, aren't you going to do something about it? You see? You ought to be obeying the Bible that the Lord shows you and the Bible truth you get and be willing to make the changes that need to be made. People look in the mirror and they don't really see what they look like. I read about an African princess. She lived in the heart of an uncivilized jungle and for years she was the chief's daughter. And she'd been told by all the people in the tribe that she was the most beautiful woman in the entire tribe. And although she didn't have any merit to view herself, she was convinced of her unparalleled beauty. 
However, one day an exploring party traveled through that part of Africa and they gave the princess a mirror as a gift. For the first time in her life, she saw her own reflection. Her immediate reaction was to smash the mirror on the nearest rock. Why? Because for the first time in her life, she knew the truth. What, uh, what other people had told her all her life was of little importance. What she believed about herself didn't make any difference. She saw for the first time her beauty was not genuine. She saw for the first time what she really looked like. And she knew she wasn't as beautiful as everybody told her she was. Mirrors are like that. Mirrors will show you what you're really like. And when you look into the mirror, sometimes you, you don't like the brutal truth. But it's truth. And sometimes you look into the Word of God and you don't like what it says. And you don't, you don't think that you, you, you get angry or you get upset about it. But it's the truth. And how will you respond to that? The Word of God will show you, but it won't do any good unless you do something about it. You have to be receptive to God's Word. You have to be submissive to God's Word. You have to read it with the attitude, I'm going to obey what I read. The third thing is, you have to be moved by the Word of God. Verse 26 and 27. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. As I mentioned this morning, there's, always, there's often a great disparity between what Christians say they believe and the way they live. A.W. Tozer said this, There's an evil which, is in a, which in its effect on the Christian religion may be more destructive than communism, Romanism, and liberalism combined. He said, It is the glaring disparity between theology and practice among professing Christians. And I want you to remind you, Tozer probably penned these words 50 years ago. Keep that in mind. So wide is this gulf between theory and practice in the church that an inquiring stranger who chances upon both would scarcely dream that there's any relation between the two of them. An intelligent observer of our human scene who heard the Sunday morning message and later watched the Sunday afternoon conduct of those who heard it would conclude that he'd been examining two distinct and contrary religions. It appears to me that too many Christians want to enjoy the thrill of feeling right, but are not willing to endure the inconvenience of being right. You see, the final step in the process that James gives us for benefiting from the Word of God is we have to be moved to act upon the Word of God. Putting the word to practical use. Well, how do we do that? Here's what he says. Number one, guard your tongue. He said, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. It's amazing, amazing how whenever he talks about being spiritual, and uh, he's not talking about what you look like, he's not talking about what you wear, what you don't wear, he's not talking about how often you're going to church, he always goes to what your tongue says. James 3, he said, if you're going to be mature, you have your tongue under control. Your, your spiritual health is determined by your tongue. It's interesting statements. And he said, if you don't guard your tongue, your religion's worthless. And by the way, a lot of people's religion, a lot of people's Christianity is negated because of their tongue. What you're, what you're saying and what you talk about and the words that come out of your mouth 
No one wants to hear your testimony. So we have to guard our tongue. He already said we're to be slow to speak, but here it's a little different. It's saying you have to learn to control what you say. Now, by the way, you're not going to be able to control your tongue. The Bible says the tongue, in, in chapter 3, the tongue can no man tame. Well, then how am I going to get control of my tongue? I'm going to have to let God control it. I'm going to have to let the person who God came to dwell in me, the Holy Spirit of God, say, help me with my tongue. And by the way, the, the, the way to do that is let Him have control of your heart. Nobody, nobody has a filthy mouth that doesn't have a filthy heart. It's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. And so those words come out of our heart. And so you have to be, realize that if I can control that, and that, that means if my tongue's under control, my heart's under control. If my heart's under control, my behavior will be under control. Okay. If I'm careless with my tongue, I'm careless with my life. So he says, I have to be able to control the tongue or guard my tongue. Then he says, I have to be willing to give to others. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. When, we, when we're living out the Word of God, we're wanting to obey God's Word, it means we're going to care about other people. See, one of the, one of the fallacies that we bought into, and again, buying into some of the world's philosophies is, oh, what they do, their business. That's not what the Bible teaches I'm teaching what everybody does. It's, it's my concern. I'm to care about everybody. We're to love everyone. We're to do good unto all men, especially them that are of the household of faith. But remember the first part of that verse, let's do good unto all men. Let's try to be a blessing to people. And historically, it's always been the church of Christ that has set up the orphanages and set up the hospitals and tried to set up the homes for the elderly. Many of the institutions that are there to help other people in society have been set up and established by the church of Christ. The one, we're the ones who have the compassion on folks and want to help people because people matter to God. If they matter to God, they ought to matter to us. And that's be willing to act upon the word means we have compassion for people and we want to do something to help them. You don't have to do everything, but you can do something. You can do something. And people will, listen, let your light so shine before men. Why? So they'll see your good works. What will they do? Glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Say, it's not for you to get a pat on the back. It's for them to see Christ. So why would you help me? I help you because God loves you. That's all. That's all. Just help you because God loves you. So he tells us to control the tongue and give to others. And then lastly, he says, guard your life. To keep himself unspotted from the world. One of the marks of spirituality is willing to keep yourself unspotted from this world. Keep yourself from being polluted by the world. Now guard your life. We need this one, Dean. You got this one up? Up a little bit more. Guard it. Be careful. Watch what you do. Watch what you allow. Don't let anything keep you from maintaining a pure heart. One of the principles in Reformers Unanimous that he talks about is how, how much easier it is to keep the heart clean than to clean it after it's been defiled. Now, he didn't say it's impossible. He just said it's harder. Okay? And it can be done, and the Lord's able to do that. But, don't, but guard yourself. Don't, don't just look at anything. Don't just read anything. Don't just let your eyes wander, fellas, at anything that comes along. You have to, you have to guard. Uh, put, make a covenant with your eyes. Make sure that you're going to focus on the things you ought to focus on. And make sure that we're going to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Now let me ask you a question. What from tonight can you put into practice? 
What tonight can you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing that? What, is, what has God said to you? Is there something in your life that, is, that you know needs to go? Then you need to get rid of it. Put it out. Cast it down. Maybe there's something that needs to come into your life that you're not doing. That's what the Bible, we, we talk about sins of commission or sins of omission. Uh, commission when we're doing things that God says we should not do but omission when we're not doing some things that God says we should be doing maybe there's some things that ought to be in your life that are not in your life I'm not sure which which way it might go maybe you just need to guard your tongue maybe you need to start giving to others maybe you need to put a guard and guard yourself but listen maybe you just need to stop making excuses and start making the effort Start doing what you, what you know you ought to do. What is God saying to yourself? Can I, am I applying the Bible I know? Because listen, God never says He'll bless the Bible hearer. He'll bless the Bible doer. Okay? That's why He said be doers of the Word and not hearers only. God never blesses you for the Bible you know. He blesses you for the Bible you live. Are you living what you know? That's where the blessing comes. That's how you benefit from God's Word. I want to read it. I want to receive it. I want to submit to it. I want to be moved by it. I want to obey what God's Word says. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the attention of everyone tonight. Thank you for the Word of God. And Lord, we want to benefit from your Word. And so, Lord, I pray that the practical things we talked about tonight, the folks would have jotted them down and ask you to help them remember those things. As tonight, maybe we'll open the Bible before we go to bed or in the morning, early in the morning we get up and we open up your Word to read it before we start the new day. I pray we'll remember these things will be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath and we'll have a clean life and we'll ask you to speak to us and give us ears to hear we'll be willing to be quiet and have a calm spirit Lord I pray that you'll help us to be submissive to what the word of God tells us the areas where we come up short areas that we need to work on the areas we need to add into our life and we won't just look in the Word and see it and then go out our way and never do anything about it, but it'll move us to action. And we'll want to do something with the Word. And then, Lord, I pray that we'll give to others. We'll be willing to help those who you have cross our path. That they'll see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. And keep ourselves unspotted from this world. Lord, help us to live. Help us to be Bible livers. That we live the Bible we know. We be obedient to the Word of God. And when others see the benefit the Bible has brought in our life, that they'll have a thirst to have it in their life as well. Help us, Lord. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. We'll have our invitation. If you're here this evening, would say, Preacher, the Spirit of God stopped at my seat. He spoke to my heart tonight. I want to receive the benefits from the Word of God that you talked about this evening. And there's some things that the Lord touched my heart about as to how I could benefit from His Word. And Pastor, I appreciate you praying for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up, Christian, and say, Pray for me tonight? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. God has spoken to your heart. The altar is open. Now, you've heard it. Now, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. God, God wants you to respond to what he's told you to do. And it begins with the action of responding to him during the invitation. Whatever your need is, God has spoken to your heart. You respond to him. Heavenly Father, have your way now in this invitation. Thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight. Thank you for the word of God. It is quick. It is powerful. 
It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And Lord, I pray that we would always allow it to work in our lives. Have your way now this invitation. May each individual do what you're bidding them to do in their heart. And I'll thank you for it. Quietly with your heads bowed, you stand to your feet as you stand. Brother Bob will sing. The piano will play. As she plays and Bob sing, God has spoken to your heart. The altar is open. Respond to him this evening. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, He passed and we follow Him there. Over us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, He promised. Believe Him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, His perfect salvation to tell. Sing it together. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Father, as we open Your Word, and we do it day by day throughout the week, let us see Jesus as we open it, and let us see ourselves. And Lord, let us allow You to Conform us to the image of your Son as we look into your Word day by day. Thank you, Lord, for people who desire to be people of the book, people who love the Word of God and desire to live the Word of God. And I pray, Lord, that as folks watch the lives of the people in this room this week, we're the only Bible somebody's going to read this week. And I pray that we'll show them who Jesus Christ really is will show them the love of God as we live our lives to please you. We love you. Thank you for a wonderful day today, God. It has been good to be in the house of the Lord today. Dismiss us now with your care, please. Make us mindful that you go with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's hear you singing. Ready? Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go. For it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed. Fellas, you head right over and help with